Hello friends, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. Hope you enjoyed Monday's episode. Big thanks to everybody who came and followed me over on Twitch after you watched the video. I'm actually live now as you're watching this. So come follow me again on Twitch if you didn't yesterday, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Come join us for whatever we're chatting about, whatever PC stuff we're doing, whatever tech crap is going on in the stream. Check me out. Anyways, why don't you go ahead and check out today's video sponsor. Today's video sponsor is Keeps. And my friends, I don't know if you know this, but two out of every three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they hit only 35. And the best way to make sure that you keep your hair is to do something about it before it actually goes away, which is where Keeps comes in. You used to have to go to the doctor's office to get this treated, but with Keeps, you have 24 seven private online access to doctors regarding your personalized plan. So you can get treated at home and they make it easy and deliver medication every three months. So you don't have to worry about pharmacy checkout lines and doctor's visits or anything like that, and especially during these times. It makes a lot of sense. And they offer generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. You may have tried some of these before, but never at the price that keeps hats. Prevention is key. Whether you have an overall thinning going on, a receding hairline, or thinning at the crown, and you can make sure that you get your treatment with Keeps. And since it takes between four to six months to actually see results, it's important to act as soon as possible. So find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than their competition, and why over 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. And if you use our link in the video description, you'll get 50% off of your first order with them. That's keeps.com forward slash UFD. Keeps.com forward slash UFD get 50% off your first order with them. All right, friends, let's go ahead and talk about the news, which is just, uh, I, I've been saying that I've hoped that NVIDIA would come out and keep the pricing the same, and maybe that was just a pipe dream. Maybe I'm just a sad dreamer who needs who needs to get his eyes out of the sky. But according to the latest leaked information that we're finding out of the chip hell forms, turns out that the RTX 3090, which is supposed to be the 2080 Ti replacements, will be... $2,000, $2,000. Now it's not necessarily confirmed that this will be the price and there's actually some information that we gotta kinda scavenge through in order to understand it, but this is coming based on an internal leak memo from, as you can see in this image, Jensen Wong. So it appears that the pricing is for Nvidia's AIB partner, Colorful, and it's a couple different models. So Colorful will have two versions of the RTX 3090, the Vulcan and the Neptune. The Vulcan's gonna have air cooling, the Neptune's going to have hybrid cooling good naming scheme there that actually kind of checks out but the Vulcan XOC is supposed to have a rough USD price of around two thousand dollars whereas the Neptune which doesn't make a whole lot of sense is cheaper at one thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars and then the regular Vulcan will be one thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars in case you want to see what those cards are going to look like this is apparently the images of the upcoming 3090s these are some beefy boys look at how massive those cards are that is as guard gargantuan the pricing really really high however there has been some speculation that the rtx 3090 might be replacing the titan class gpu and they will be doing away with the titans altogether and just simply rebranding them as the 90 tier and then the 3080 ti will likely have 20 gigabytes of vram and come in somewhere at the 1200 to 1500 dollar region i hope that's not true but if the rtx 3090 is at the 1750 region for the lower end versions then maybe we could see the 3080 Ti come in at twelve hundred dollars. I'm still, I'm still wishing upon a star here, my friends. I still think it's entirely possible. But let's not forget that when the 20 series was set to launch, we had tons of non-real information happening just before launch, with people saying that the GTX 1180, which was the rumored name up until a week before launch, was going to be around fifteen hundred dollars, which it just didn't end up being. It ended up being a thousand dollars technically from Nvidia. $1, dollars realistically but still not as bad as the expectations were so 1750 minimum two thousand dollars for the highest end rtx 3090 is this in your ballpark let's say that the 3090 isn't the replacement for the titan and there is a three thousand dollar titan on top of this what do you think of that is this something that you want to see is this the price point that you were hoping nvidia would hit what, what did you want the highest end consumer enthusiast grade card to really cost here? The 2080 Ti replacement, what were you expecting out of Nvidia? And what is your limit for buying one of these? I'm keen to hear from you down below. We did a poll over on my Twitch stream yesterday where the majority of people said that they're actually gonna be waiting until big Navi drops before they decide on whether or not they're gonna be picking up Nvidia's RTX 30 series. Is that something that you hold fast to? Let me know. I'm keen to hear everybody's thoughts down below in the comments. 
But we've also got some more information from NVIDIA. They're going to be holding their second GTC keynote of this year in October. Jensen Wong going to have his keynote on October 5th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. They already had one of the GTCs this year, and they're going to be having a second one. This likely will just be a further delve into the more uh, heavy topics that they do, such as artificial intelligence and other data center related things. Not necessarily something for consumers, but it will be happening. And it turns out that a hidden selfie camera will be happening. ZTE Axon 20 being announced as the world's first invisible selfie camera is going to be announced on September 1st. The launch event for this device is supposed to take place then. It's going to be a mass produced smartphone with a hidden selfie camera. I'm sure if you shine it under direct light, you're going to be able to see it. But this is some intriguing technology. I'm actually kind of curious to see how this works. It Your availability to get this in the US is probably going to be near zero simply because of the whole ZTE and US government relations thing. But it does seem interesting to have this happen. You don't need the notch or the hole punch anymore. You just it's under that might reduce the quality. We'll have to see. I'm curious. I'm really curious to see what an under screen selfie camera performs like. And in case you're curious to see what a Pixel 4a performs like in your hands and you pre-ordered one of them, turns out that Google has started shipping the pre-orders. They were supposed to launch on the 20th, but some people might get it a day or two early. And if you bought RAM or an SSD now, you might have bought it a day or two early before some price drops, which are anticipated. This is coming out of Digitimes reporting that DRAM and NAND pricing is expected to fall by 10% in Q4 of this year. So if you've been holding off on that upgrade, Grade to wait until the RTX 30 series and AMD's next generation of CPUs, you might be able to get a good deal on upgrading that SSD and RAM as well. Hopefully, we'll see if that actually pans out. Cheaper pricing could be yours and could be yours. The Xbox Series X detailing some information that they're going to go into deep depths on at the Hot Chips conference, but there's some stuff that we haven't heard from Microsoft yet, which is really intriguing. Number one, we've got details on ray tracing machine learning. They're talking about how many giga ray box and giga ray triangles they can do, which is not the same as NVIDIA's giga rays. They're measuring two different things, so we can't actually equivalent them and see how the Xbox Series X holds up against an RTX 2080 Ti, but 380 giga rays per second at ray box peak and then 95 giga rays per second on ray triangle peak anyways it's supposed to have minor area costs for three to ten times ray tracing acceleration but then also confirming that there will be machine learning inference for resolution scaling this should be something very similar to deep learning super sampling from nvidia cards where you run it at a lower resolution you use artificial intelligence to upscale it to keep the same frame rate without the cost that comes with a higher resolution so this could be something that is pretty good on the Xbox Series X. And then finally, just some more details on variable rate shading as well. The Series X is looking to be a heckin' wicked console. We'll have to see what the price is. We talked about in yesterday's hot news that Monster potentially leaked the price that it's going to be about $600. But for a 12 teraflop ray tracing, machine learning, variable rate shading monster such as this, it's actually not that bad of a price. What do you expect the Series X to come in price at? I'm keen to hear from you down below in the comments. And just to mention, IBM has revealed their next gen 7 nanometer processor, the IBM Power 10 processor getting announced. This likely will matter nothing to you in a consumer orientation, but will matter to a lot of businesses who still use IBM's hardware to run. And in case you like to run websites that might be a little risky, a little dodgy, might not be secure, Chrome's got your back, okay? They not only make sure that everything's secure HTTPS on the website side, but they also were making sure that it was the forms on those pages were secure as well. And if they weren't, they were moving this little security lock up at the top. Well, turns out that they realized that that didn't help a whole lot of people and now they're actually going to be indicating the forms themselves are not secure, which could hopefully help people to understand that what they're perusing on the internet is not okay. You got to stop. And that's what Apple's saying, even more to Epic Games. We talked about this last week, about how Epic Games tried to force Apple's hands into dropping their, their cut of what they take from the Apple Store when the, anything is purchased from them, the 30% cut that's happening. When Fortnite tried to force this hand, Apple removed them from the App Store. Google also subsequently did that. And it looks like that's not where Apple decided to stop because they are also removing Epic Games developer account as well as cutting them off from iOS and Mac development tools, which seems to be in line with the retaliation that 
Apple would have. Not only did the one app violate it, but it was also kind of them as a developer that violated it. So Apple is getting rid of them, but Epic Games is suing them for this as well and stating that this will do irreparable harm to Epic you don't say, and also saying that this will hurt other applications that have to use Unreal Engine with iOS or Mac OS, and it won't be able to develop future versions of Unreal Engine for those platforms. So Epic Games is saying, look at Apple being bullies, and Apple is just essentially saying, you wanted this, you did this, did you think we weren't gonna punish you? Did you think we were just gonna punish your silly little kids game? No. No, we needed to come after you. You need to learn a lesson, Epic Games. You're only worth $17 billion, okay? We're worth a couple trillion. So why don't you sh sit down and shut your mouth, Epic Games. You you let us take that 30%. If you don't like it, if you don't like it, why don't you go develop your own phone and your own app store and your own app ecosystem? We put in the hard work here. You did it, you piddly little tiddlywinks. What do you think of this? Let me know what you think of the Epic Games versus Apple showdown down below in the comments. And we got some details about potential new PSVR 2 that could be coming out sometime soon. There was a new job listing posted over in Japan indicating that they have a mechanical engineer who needs to work on the next generation VR head mounted display, which would be great because the PSVR 1 sucks. It's awful. The resolution is terrible. Any fine detail, it just, it's bad as a headset. I don't like it. So getting a PSVR 2 would be great and it would be great to get ghost of Tsushima is getting a co-op mode this fall there's going to have a free legends update which will include two and four player missions you can check out the trailer for it down below at the link in the video description and while you're down there you can check out the link for today's video sponsor big thanks again to keeps for sponsoring this video don't forget to check out the link in the video description keeps.com forward slash ufd to save 50 percent off and get your hair loss treatment started now as opposed to later make sure you get it before it actually happens and that's going to wrap up this episode of hot news don't forget to drop on by my twitch stream right now i'm over there i'm live at least as of the time that this episode goes live if you're viewing this hours later i will likely not be live but that is to be said, uh, we have a big announcement coming soon. We're going to be doing a 24 hour charity stream, raising money for Syngap Research Fund to help fund potential research that could end up going to cure my son at some point. And we're going to be giving away my personal rig over there, a custom one of a kind UFD tech PC worth about three, three and a half thousand dollars somewhere in that region. We'll keep you posted on more details as that's happening. But August 28th. Mark counters for that, friends, and mark your life as having watched this episode of Hot News because it's done. Thank you. Bye.